The rumor mill is now milling, and NC State could be coughing up a couple millions. We're talking about it here Tuesday on Locked on Wolfpack. You are Locked on Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things just a little bit further? Do you ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada, and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. Happy Tuesday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. Kenton, the rumors officially hit the internet all throughout the day on Monday. This is, of course, talking about Kevin Keats and his job security here at NC State. I won't get too far into the weeds on this thing, but the rumors are out that Kevin Keats may be finished at the conclusion of this ACC tournament, I guess still depending on what happens. Tuesday, first round, NC State plays Louisville, ACC tournament in Washington, D.C. for some reason. We can maybe talk about that another day. NC State is a nine and a half point favorite. Kent and I heard you talking about this on Locked On ACC, and you said NC State could in fact be on upset alert. Do you still believe this to be true? Well, let me start here, okay? Yesterday you said the writing was on the wall, that Coach Keys could be gone. Well, the writing's on the wall, it's in the locker room, and now it's on the whiteboard because it's it's all over but the shouting at this point in time. Do I believe the Wolfpack should still be on upset alert despite rumors swirling about the other red and white that's coming into this game with Kenny Payne, and he allegedly is, is accepting a buyout from his alma mater? That answer is a definitive yes. You have a reduced version of DJ Horn or no DJ Horn at all, potentially, coming into this game. And you're going to be going into this game with a team that has, I I, I hate to say it, but this team has looked listless and lifeless in these last few games. Yep. That's, that's just the objective truth. I saw this team win a ball game without hitting a single three against the team that everybody thought was a tournament team in Wake Forest. So I don't want to hear that, oh, the, the effort is still there. Everything's still there. I don't want to hear it because I saw effort. I saw it. In that game, you and I specifically said, it's not the shooting. It's not the execution. It's the effort that won this game. Do I stand by my statements from Locked On ACC that the Wolfpack need to be on upset alert? They need to be on their P's and Q's to come out of this one? Absolutely. Am I guaranteeing a Louisville win? No. Heavens no. If I were a betting man, who would I be placing my money on? Of course I'm rolling with NC State here. But with that being said, NC State needs to be under, keep their head on the swivel, and you have to show up for this game. You have to show up for this game because as bad as Louisville has looked at times this year, last time I checked, it took everything that we had to put them away last time. Being without a fully healthy DJ Horn, you can just mosey in and come out with that nine and a half, ten point win. I think that's a bad bet, brother. It's a bad bet. The outcome of this game against Louisville on Tuesday, I don't think it should sway the overall decision one way or another. I believe that decision is more than likely already made. But if you find a way to lose to this Louisville team in this ACC tournament, in this season, you want to talk about apathy and you want to talk about the frustrations for years amongst NC State basketball fans, it would reach a level so ugly we have never seen it before. I don't mean to be like petty in saying this, but what is the most NC State outcome you can think of? in this particular situation. It might be not taking this game seriously and fumbling around and, in fact, losing this game. Louisville, obviously, is in a much worse position than NC State is, but if they reach up and grab us 
and we lose to that team, that is a bad look in every possible way imaginable. Make every effort to get up off the mat and find a way to avoid complete embarrassment in this one on Tuesday. Absolutely. And and the biggest thing is this, I don't think people understand what happens when you get rid of a bad coach a lot of times, right? A bad coach who isn't necessarily beloved in the locker room and all that. It's not, I'm telling you, I have seen this many a time. And as a matter of fact, you all have seen this. Remember what happened to the Raiders at the end of last year after they got rid of Josh McDaniels? You don't want to be that team that gets caught off guard and shellacked by that 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 squad. If it is a situation where Louisville is getting rid of Kenny Payne, it is very possible that that team plays motivated and plays one of their best games of the season. It's very possible that that happens. And so with that in mind, NC State has to come in motivated to at least say, damn the torpedoes, we making it out of day one. You know what I mean? Like, I get it, you know. Outside of the National Mall and all those things, they ain't they ain't all that much going on in DC. But we gon' we gonna stay here long enough to get us some wings with some mumbo sauce on it or something. You know. NC State being the 10 seed playing on Tuesday against the 15 seed in Louisville in Washington, DC is about as apathetic as you can possibly get at this point in time. So that that work there is nastier than warm potato salad. That's just this just downright disgusting. It is it is just unappealing by all accounts imaginable. And so, I mean, certainly all eyes are going to be on this game because everybody's waiting for news in one direction or the other. Of course, if NC State wins this game, perhaps you're just going to have to sit another. I believe they play Syracuse if they do indeed beat Louisville on Tuesday. But certainly this is a one game at a time situation. It always has been for NC State in the ACC tournament. But uh, you can you can believe that NC State fan base, whether they want to be or not, will be tuned in to the outcome of this one. You talk about apathy setting in. I think it'll turn into outright rage if okay. you lose to a Louisville team. Like that is the moment where even the most apathetic people who were you know shrugging their shoulders saying that there's you know hey shout out to your local WalMarts and and Targets and all that because they're going to be shipping out a bunch of new TVs in the Triangle area. If if Louisville actually pulls off this upset against NC State, which again, I think there's a better chance of it than many people believe. Coming up next, we have a whole lot of nothing or a whole lot of something after a quick word from our sponsor. First sponsor of the day is Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things just a little bit further? Do you ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class-exclusive Google built-in is your always-updating assistant to call on for, well, anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch touchscreen infotainment system. Infotainment, a real word. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect midsize crossover for your next big adventure. The 2024 Nissan Pathfinder has room up to eight and expansive cargo capacity and advanced available 4x4 capabilities. With 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds towing, when adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop Nissan USA. Dot com. Middle portion of our Tuesday episode, now time for a whole lot of nothing, or a whole lot of something. Three topics, and we'll tell you exactly where we stand on them. First one here, if NC State loses, if they do indeed lose to Louisville in the first round of the ACC tournament, and Kevin Keats is not fired, a whole lot of nothing, a whole lot of something. I would say a whole lot of something, because what? <laughs> we spoke about this multiple times, and I said that the, what I, the word that I had gotten was as long as the ending of this season was not embarrassing, he could be bought back. And then you sit here and see what what's our losing streak currently standing at? Four games, a four-game losing streak that includes losing to your two fiercest rivals who are right in the triangle, right next to you. You, you also go out with a loss – to a team that could be coachless. So in essence, you lost to a rudderless ship. 
That's that's what you did there. It's a whole lot of something. At that point, it's not even like, oh, we really don't care. We're not serious about basketball. At that point, you're openly stating, ah, oh, we we could care less what you fans think. We could care less what y'all think is best. We could care less what you all want. We want our guy to be in, not because he's a winner, not because he's proven anything, but just because, um, in the words of that old song, it's cheaper to keep her. And in this this situation, the her is the lovely Kevin Key, the the multiple nails in the coffin. Yeah, I think you summarized it just about perfectly. And we talked about to to have a chance at keeping his job, he had to indeed not finish the season in embarrassing fashion. Losing to Louisville is about as embarrassing as it could possibly get, especially they may or may not be without a coach at this current time. That's, of course, still a rumor. But, I mean, it's a whole lot of something, obviously, because there there would be no reason under the sun to keep him here if you indeed finish the season on that note. It is the ultimate no-brainer. Should not take any longer after that. Every single sign, including the whiteboard that Kenton opened the episode with, I mean, it, it tells you all you need to know. This is this is where we're at. This is what needs to be done. And if we do indeed lose to Louisville, no more hesitations should be taken from there on out. Second one here. DJ Horn missed the majority of the game at Pitt, so he is potentially not at 100% for this Louisville matchup. Whole lot of nothing or whole lot of something? Whole lot of something. Whole lot. That is, I, ladies, gentlemen, friends, I, what are we doing here? No, DJ, DJ Horn has by himself carried the Wolfpack to multiple wins, okay? He has single-handedly said, you know what? Y'all don't know which way to go. I'll make it easy. Follow me multiple times this year. If he cannot play in this game, I know that everybody imagines a world where we're that head and shoulders above Louisville, where we could not have him in and see the team no longer playing with fire, but we are still that much better than Louisville to dominate. I'm here to tell you. I stopped by to tell you we are not. We are not that good. So this is a whole lot of something. We need to find somebody who's going to generate some offense in his absence if he can't go. And even if he is rolling that just a reduced clip, we still need somebody to kind of lighten that load a little bit. I'm old enough to remember when we played Louisville already this season and it was a relatively close game. That game was certainly not under control in the way that the spread may look like it may be uh, for Tuesday's matchup, a nine and a half point favorite. I got to be honest. I think that's a little high. I think yeah. that is a little overconfident in how NC state is currently playing basketball right now. Maybe that reflects some of the rumors at Louisville that probably makes a lot of sense there. But if NC state has a, a hindered DJ horn who has been all season, their best player, they might be sweating a little bit. I mean, there, there is no reason to believe, as I already said, that NC State is going to walk in and just completely stomp them out. And so I expect this to be a pretty close basketball game. I expect it to probably come down to a handful of runs there in the second half of this thing. So DJ Horn potentially not being at 100% is it's a whole lot of something. If, if I am on this NC State basketball team, I better show up with everything I got. Or else, as we stated, you might be saddled with complete and entire embarrassment with a first round exit last one here nc state baseball with their sweep over boston college is now on a nine game winning streak a whole lot of nothing a whole lot of something i'll say a whole lot of something because they have the opposite of can't get right out of this whatever happens with them it's like you're seeing a, like an angels in the outfield-esque thing where it's like oh no our pitching's terrible our bats are hot as fish grease oh no we can't get a hit to save our lives our pitchers are looking like they're they're the Los Angeles Dodgers bullpen at this point. Like that's how this thing is is shaken out. And so you're you're looking at a situation where have they played the best of competition? No. But I said the exact same thing about the softball team. It is good to get that confidence, to grow that confidence. And how did the softball team capitalize on that? By going and beating one of the top ten teams in the nation to start their series off against Clifford. Now, granted, they lost that series. However, they showed they are competitive. They did have that confidence. They were rolling in the right direction, and they've been good since then as well. So, you know, that's baseball. Keep it coming. A whole lot of something. So with some elements of your answer, Kenton, I'm going to go a whole lot of nothing. 
Mm. And yes, it is it is good to sweep Boston College, an ACC team, but the rest of those wins in there, the back half of the Hawaii series, and then Towson, it it doesn't exactly move the needle for a lot of people. Winning ball games is unequivocally a great thing. I'm not poo pooing on that, but this weekend they got to go down to Atlanta and play Georgia Tech. I want to see if the winning streak can hold up in a series like that one. And before that, you got to play UNCG today, who has already beat Wake Forest, might I add. So the competition, of course, is going to continually get tougher for NC State. I want to see if the winning streak can bleed into that. Beating the teams that you absolutely should beat is great. Absolutely. You should beat Boston College, and they did. Credit where credit is due. But they got to keep this thing rolling. Nine, A nine-game winning streak in the beginning of March doesn't exactly amount to a whole lot more often than not. I want to see a nine-game winning streak continued through mid to late March. Then that'll be a whole lot of something. But for now, keep this momentum going. Keep stacking wins on top of each other. So for right now, a whole lot of nothing. Coming up next, we're talking about NC State Baseball's matchup with UNCG today after a quick word from our sponsors. Our second sponsor of the day is FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every single game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to bet on point spreads, money lines, and you can even bet who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Last couple minutes here on Tuesday, Pac-9's midweek matchup against UNCG is tonight at home, Doak Field. Worth mentioning, UNCG has already knocked off Wake Forest in a midweek affair this season. Now, college baseball midweek games are often extremely chaotic, and so it's imperative that NC State finds a way to keep out of the chaos and effectively handle business against the Spartans of UNC Greensboro. A little bit of shift in the weekend rotation saw Ryan Marone give up a weekend rotation spot for Logan Whitaker, who thrived in that Friday start, but Ryan Marone slotted back into the bullpen. My early anticipation was that Ryan Marone would be now become your midweek starter. If that is not the case, I would like to see a guy like Chance Mako start this game. Then him being the top recruit that did actually make it to campus for NC State, I think this is a perfect spot to continue getting him more. He still only has one inning that he's thrown so far this year. So if you want to continue to progress, guys, I think this is the perfect spot to see Chance Mako start a ball game. Yeah, and, and I think the biggest thing for this game is the bats need to look alive. UNCG, yeah. when, they're, when they're pitching their best stuff, they can be very tough to score on. Just ask the Demon Deacons. Right. That's a real not a not exactly an easy order. But with that being said, again, our bats have been hot. We've had that that situation where everything has seemingly gone right. I'd like to see some chance make up too. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it. You know, we talked about hey, you want to have your rotations fully um fully ironed out by the time we get to ACC season. We're in ACC season. I'm not mad at chance getting a chance, no pun intended here. For the midweeker, I'm I'm not mad at that at all, and this is a midweeker that carries a little more weight than some people would think. Even though this is a team that I believe is in the midst of a four to five game losing streak at the moment, they've shown us they can beat the best. As I mentioned, the schedule getting tougher for NC State baseball. Seeing UNCG in a midweek is a portion of that. the The RPI for this type of thing matters a lot more for a team like UNCG in this game. So they're going to want this one. This is the type of game that if they knock off an NC State, it'll help their tournament chances when the time comes in late May and June. So UNCG is going to give us their best midweek shot. And NC State's offense, like you mentioned, Kenton, they have to be able to answer the bell like they have been these last couple of weeks. The offense is going to have to stay hot. Pennington and AMAC were still workshopping a nickname for the two of those guys. They've been absolutely dynamite offensively. So they uh, a nickname, I believe, is warranted at this point. but. Have to find a way to keep the bats rolling Tuesday against UNCG. Yeah, you know, I, I'll I'll just tell you this much: if if uh, GM was putting the same things off the line that we were seeing from Garrett and Mac at this point in time, they'd be the best selling cars in America. But in all seriousness, you know, those two have been a huge part of what's kept NC State's offense not only afloat but thriving. Right? 
the leader in the country or one of the leaders in the country of RBIs and Mac. And of course, Pennington provided the pop from first base. Um, you know, it, it's it's really good to see those two having the impact that they're having offensively so early. That'll do it for us here on Tuesday. As always, thank you all so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that like button, drop your comments in the comment box, and tell us what you think about this Louisville matchup for men's basketball on Tuesday afternoon. Tell us what you think about NC State baseball's nine-game winning streak and their matchup on Tuesday against UNCG. And if you have not already, be sure to mash that subscribe button, tell a friend to tell a friend to do the same, and we will see you all tomorrow. Until then, go Pack. Go Pack.